Hey everybody, I'm back to blink more lights, but this time with timers and interrupts. Welcome back everybody. This is another embedded systems video. If you're new to embedded systems, if you're if you find yourself confused, there are a bunch of videos that preceded this one. You may want to go back and watch those. I'll put links in the description. But now on to the tutorial. In my last embedded video, I showed you how to blink LEDs on an Arduino Uno and on a MSP430 FR5969 using just plain C and without any of the Arduino IDE or library support. The point of that video was to get you started, to help you see how cross compilers work, to help you see some of the tools you're going to need to do embedded programming, to help you get a sense for what it's like to program microcontrollers, and to show you how special function registers are used to control output pins. This here is the code from last time. It's really simple and I chose to do it like this because it's simple, but it's probably not how I would do it on a real device most of the time because it isn't very efficient. It's basically just spinning the processor while it's waiting for time to pass. And so the processor is active and processing when nothing is going on. Another reason is that waiting is keeping the processor busy, making it difficult for my program to do anything else while we wait. But it is simple. Never discount the value of simplicity. If all you need to do is blink a light and you don't actually care about a couple hundred microamps, then this approach could be just fine. Well, how do we improve on it? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're going to use timers and we're going to use interrupts. Most microcontrollers, actually most processors, have built-in timers that help you solve problems like this more efficiently. And today, we're going to change our previous examples to take advantage of those timers. Like before, I'm using the Arduino Uno and the MSP430 FR5969. It happens to be the hardware that I have lying around. I use two different microcontrollers so you can see the differences and the similarities between the two. I'm also using the same software tools I used in my last Blink video. So that's AVR GCC, AVR Dude, MSP430 GCC, and MSP debug. I put links to everything in the description. But before we jump into the code, I want to talk about what interrupts do. See, what we did before is called polling. Polling is where we check over and over again to see the status of something and to see if it's changed. Polling is basically the computer's version of nagging. It's like what little kids do when they want something. They're, they just ask over and over and over again. And sometimes this is called busy waiting because the processor is just busily asking. It's checking to see, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And in the first version of our Blink program, that's effectively what's happening. These delay functions are basically just waiting for time to pass. Interrupts, on the other hand, we can think about interrupts as how a more mature person waits. With interrupts, we tell the hardware, hey, I would really like to know when this thing is done or when this amount of time has passed. And then the interrupts say, okay, I'll let you know when it gets there or when it's ready. And the nice thing about interrupts is that while we're waiting, we can do other stuff. We can just keep working. And we know that the hardware is going to let us know once that thing that we're interested in actually happens. And I also think that if computers had feelings that they would find interrupt style code to be way less annoying. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our timer. Now I have to warn you, timers on microcontrollers can seem a little weird at first. So one might think that you would just say, hey, fire an interrupt in 45 milliseconds, but it's never that simple because timers typically have different modes they can operate in and they are generally pretty simple. Now I'm gonna start with the AVR, the Atmega 328P, which the Arduino Uno uses. Any timers you find on microcontrollers are typically going to have a clock source. Now this could be the system clock or some microcontrollers have other clock sources. I'll show you that with the MSP430 and you can use these different clock sources. And the idea is that they count up each time that the clock source ticks. So as the clock ticks up and down, you have a counter that is going to increment each time that clock source ticks. I'm currently running the Atmega 328P at roughly 16 megahertz. So if I use the system clock, it's going to count once every one sixteen millionth of a second. And that's going to be a little too fast for me because the counter register that counts up each time only has 16 bits. So it's going to overflow about 240 times per second. And I want to blink my light maybe once a second. So to handle this, microcontrollers typically have something called a prescaler on their timers. The prescaler's job is simply to slow down the clock so that our clock runs at a more manageable rate. And that makes it a lot easier to wait for things that are longer than say one 240th of a second. And now let me just show you how this works in code. So the first thing that I want to do is tell the microcontroller when I want to get an interrupt. I'm going to set this value in the OCR1A register, which has nothing to do with optical character recognition. It's the output compare register for timer one, and I'm going to set it to counter value. Now this value here, I haven't defined it yet, but it's going to be the number of clock ticks that I want to wait until getting an interrupt. And again, we'll get into that in a minute. Now we're going to configure the timer. So there are two registers we're going to use for this, TCCR1A, 
and TCCR1B, which I'm pretty sure means timer counter configuration register for timer one. And there are two of them, so we have A and B. Now for this example, we're going to leave A as all zeros. In other timer modes, we might have to set some of those bits to one. For now, we're going to use CTC mode, which stands for clear timer on compare. And what that means simply is that at each clock tick, it's going to compare the value of the counter, of the timer's counter, to that OCR1A register, that value we just set. And if it matches, then it's going to clear the counter and give us an interrupt, if we requested it, which we will shortly. And we also need to set the prescaler. Setting these two bits to one tells the timer to use a prescaler value of 1024, meaning that it's going to divide the clock by 1024. So our 16 megahertz system clock becomes about 16 kilohertz. So like I was saying before, this is simply to slow things down and allow me to wait a bit longer before the counter overflows. Now my last bit of timer configuration, I need to tell the timer that I want an interrupt. And I do this by setting the appropriate bit in the TIMSK1 register, which might be timer interrupt mask register. If I don't do this, it will set a flag in the TIFR1 register. But when that happens, our interrupt service routine won't run. And we could have a while loop that checked that register, but that kind of pulling nonsense defeats the whole purpose of using interrupts, which is the point of this video. That's what we're trying to avoid here. So then finally, we enable interrupts. Now, this is just a global enabling. There are times when your program may want to turn off interrupts when it's not safe for your code to be interrupted by some random event. So the ability to turn on and off interrupts comes in very handy. And so now what we would do is we'd come down and in this while loop, we would actually, this is where we would do something useful. This is a Blink application. So right now I'm just going to leave it be, but if this were not a Blink application, this is where I could make function calls. I could do, I could do other things, but for now I'm going to leave it empty. Now I want to clarify one thing, all these register names and values, I didn't know them coming into this. I had to look them up. I know how timers generally work on microcontrollers, but I don't want anyone to get the idea that I have all of this stuff memorized, especially for the Arduino Uno, which I don't spend a lot of time with. So maybe with some experience, it was easier for me to find what these values were, but the details are going to vary based on the hardware you use and you're just going to have to look it up, but definitely don't think that you should have this stuff memorized. Okay, now before I get carried away, there are a few things that we are still missing. The first is that we didn't define that counter value thing that I used earlier. We need to figure out how many clock ticks we want to wait between timer firings. Our prescaler is set at 1024. If you remember, that's the same as basically right shifting by 10 bits. And I looked up my clock value, put it here. And so if we divide our clock speed by the prescaler, then that's how many ticks should happen in one second. And then last of all, it would be really nice to actually blink the light. So let's make our interrupt service routine, our ISR as it's usually called. And we define that a little different from other functions. This tells the compiler that this function is an ISR and that it is specifically the ISR that's supposed to fire when timer one's comparison hardware matches the value we specified. And in this function, I'm going to toggle my output pin every time the timer fires. And that's it. We now have an interrupt style blink for our Arduino Uno. Okay, before I get too excited, let's try it out and make sure it works. We gotta update our make file to compile our timer version as well. And we compile it and we install it on the board. And look, we're blinking. Now let's see how this looks on our other hardware. So let's jump over to the MSP430 and you're going to notice that things are pretty similar, but there are some differences, both in how the timers work and also in what I'm going to do in this example. One difference you're going to see is that I'm using some of the MSP430's clock features. The processor has three clocks, the master clock, the submaster clock, and the A clock, or I believe it's the auxiliary clock. They can each be fed from different clock sources, including external clock signals. For this example, we're going to use a clock. And here I'm just going to set a clock to use the VLO or the very low frequency oscillator, which runs at about 10 kilohertz. Now the line above and below are simply there to make sure that we aren't accidentally changing the processor's clock configuration. It's sort of a password of sorts. Again, we're going to specify the counter value like before. Of course, we'll figure out what that value should be shortly. Then we set the timer to use a clock as a clock source. We put it in up mode. That's just the mode for the MSP430 that matches the CTC mode that we used on the Arduino. 
It goes up and then the interrupt fires when we reach the requested counter value. And we're going to use a prescaler of eight, meaning that we divide VLO's 10 kilohertz by eight. So the clock is going to tick about 1250 times per second. So why am I using such a small prescaler? It's a lot smaller than the 1024 we used with the Arduino. And the reason is that we are working with a much slower clock, 10 kilohertz instead of 16 megahertz. So I just don't need to divide it as much. Okay, so then we enable the timer interrupt and we're off to the races. Now let's come down here and implement our ISR. You're going to notice that the MSP430 compiler's syntax is a bit different from the AVRs. I'm sorry, I wish this was standardized, but interrupt related stuff seems to vary from compiler to compiler. In essentials though, we're doing the same thing. You'll also recall from before that the MSP430 board that I'm using has two LEDs. So I'm going to blink two of them in here, just like I did in the last video. Also in this ISR, I also need to clear the timer. If I don't do this, my timer interrupt will only fire once. So you're not going to get any blinking. Now we just need to set our counter value up here in the code. As I mentioned, a clock is using the VLO clock source, which is running at about 10 kilohertz. It's actually not a very accurate clock. I wouldn't use it for anything that has to be precise, but for this demo, it's going to work great. With a prescaler of eight, the clock is going to tick once every about every 0.8 milliseconds and it's a 16 bit counter register. So it's going to overflow after about 52 seconds with the current settings. So if we set counter value to 1250, then we should get about a second. So let's find out. We'll compile it. We install it. and it works. The timing isn't exact and I could play around with it to improve things, but it's good enough for today's purposes. Now, one more thing. When we started, one of the reasons that I said interrupts were better than polling is energy efficiency. But so far we haven't really saved any energy. We're using interrupts, but we're still leaving the processor on while we're waiting. We could be doing useful work and that's cool, but we're not saving energy. So let's make one final tweak to our example. Let's put the processor to sleep while we wait. And on the MSP430, we do this like this. This here is telling the processor that I want to go into low power mode three, that's LPM three, and I want global interrupts to be enabled, that's GIE. The MSP430 has a lot of different power modes and they have different strengths and weaknesses, and I'm probably at some point going to end up doing a video on them in the future, but for now, this is going to suffice. And I don't have a power meter with me, but if I did, you would now see that the current draw is probably about 100 microamps lower than it was before we started putting it to sleep. Now, of course, that doesn't change the amount of current it takes to power these lights I'm blinking. In this case, those lights are still going to account for most of the power consumption. But in devices that aren't flashing lights all the time, putting the processor to sleep can make a big difference. One other comment here, you're going to notice that I still have my while loop down here. You might be tempted to take this out. Maybe you're thinking, hey, all of our logic is now in the timer and in the interrupt service routine, and you're right. But if main ever completes and returns, the processor is going to halt and the timer is going to stop firing. So we really need to make sure that we stay in main. We can't finish main. And an infinite while loop is perfect for that. And I'm also going to put the sleep command in down here into the loop. This is probably unnecessary because we're never coming out of sleep. We're going to sleep and staying asleep. But embedded systems makes you a bit paranoid. And the thinking is that if for any reason the processor decides to wake up from sleep mode, either because of a logic error on my part or because of some cosmic alpha particle that hits my processor and flips a bit, whatever crazy thing happens that I want it to go back to sleep. It's probably never going to happen, but it doesn't hurt to be careful. So that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for joining me. Timers and interrupts are not just used on embedded processors. Your laptop and your desktops and all your servers use timers and interrupts, but we don't usually see them unless you're working in the kernel. And we use them a lot in embedded systems, but now you know what they are and you know how to use them to do powerful, flashy, blinky things. I hope this is helpful. Please let me know if there's topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. Please subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss those future videos. And until next time, I will see you later. Thank you.